We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. You still with me, Hannah? Hey. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies... You thought you were going to die? You're going to be fine. ..battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Ooh. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Ooh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We make we? a good team. Yeah. Do you think I look like you, Becca? Is that what you're saying? No comments. <laughs> <laughs> and some old friends. Pardon? I don't think you turned on the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> don't panic. Just move out me way. Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? Here's your key. Come on, man. <laughs> to show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's lots of crypt on here. Well, there's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. I did the half marathon, Wolverhampton half marathon, when I was 17. Yeah. With no training. <laughs> and I couldn't walk for a week. <laughs> like, I was having to go down the stairs on my bum. I couldn't bend my knees. I'm like, mess. Maybe you should have trained. That's after these people out running, yeah. I quite often think, shall I pull up and ask if they want a lift? <laughs> I can run. You, I, bet, I haven't seen you run ever. I've known you now some time. You've never run anywhere. I run. I can run. You're out of breath, good and downstairs. <laughs> Put your sausage roll back in there as well. It's 11.30 in the morning in the West Midlands, and on shift together are paramedic Andy Turner and his crewmate and daughter, student paramedic Emily. Did you not have breakfast? <clears throat> you need to eat breakfast. I know. Everybody always asks me, like, what is it like working with you? But you are, you are my best mate, and we do get on really well. I know it sounds really cheesy and horrible. You do irritate me, and I'm sure I irritate you as well, but we do get on really well, and work together really well. Three-year-old female with a head injury. <coughs> Cut above bridge of nose on forehead. So your main thing with that then is, if, is how's the kid, you know? Yeah. Want to check her eyes and stuff, give it a clean, make sure there's no dirt in it. Andy was a music teacher before retraining as a paramedic. It is an interesting one, isn't it? The dynamic of going to see a child when I'm working with my own daughter. Emily is 20. She joined the ambulance service just over a year ago. The father and daughter team arrive at their young patient's house. Don't walk across the grass and pull mud into somebody's house. Hello. Ambulance here. All right. Hello there. Hi. Mum, my Hi. name's Andy. This is Emily. Who have we got here then? This is me. Mum, can yeah. we just turn the TV oh, off? Is that all right? Yeah. Mum of four, Leah, was out of the room when she heard Mia cry out. Oh, dear. Um, I wasn't in here. I was in the kitchen, but she said she's climbed up there and just hit it out of the end. Oh, off the radiator. Oh, no. the, the fact that she's crying is a good thing. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, was she knocked out at all, Mum? Uh, no, she came... Came running straight through. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, Mia, sweetie pie, can we have a look at the rest of your head to see if you've got any pain anywhere else? Is that okay? Yeah. Oh, sweetheart. Okay. Let's just have a look at the rest of your head. Does anywhere else hurt, sweetheart? 
No, just this one on this alley here. Yeah? Okay. Have a little, little look and feel. Okay. Did you bump your nose? Did you bump your ears? Did you bump your rosy cheeks? No. Did you bump your toes? Have you got tickly feet? No. You haven't got tickly feet. You must be the only person that doesn't. Oh, you're so brave, aren't you? You can do that. I'll get some balls. Is this your puppy? Is it a boy or a girl? What's her name? Well, what we'll probably do, What's Mum, because oh, she's three yeah. and she's got a head injury. We'll probably pop her in just to get checked out by the doctor at the hospital, just in case. Before they head off, Emily needs to clean little Mia's wound to stop any infection getting in. I'm so sorry. Mummy! Mummy's just here. Do you want to cuddle with Mummy? There we go. You sit on Mummy's lap. Sitting with her mum has calmed Mia down enough for Andy to do his basic observations. So this machine is looking at Mia's heart and her oxygen levels. And it's saying that she's got lots of oxygen in her blood, which is really good. That's better, Mia. You've calmed down a little bit now. Can I have a high five? Yeah. Can I have another high five? Can I have another high five? Can I have another high five? Yeah, and down low. And up high. You're really good at that. So, Mia, now you're not crying. We're happy? Is anywhere else hurting at all? No. Is that still hurting there or has it stopped hurting now? It's stopped now. Oh, look at you. You've got a smooshy face. Have a look at my nose. Look at my nose. I'm just going to shine this in your eyes. You've got beautiful eyes, haven't you? Do you want to know something, Mia? Do you know I've got a baby girl as well? Do you know who my baby girl is? No. She's my daughter. My dad. Did you know that? <laughs> she did. You did know that. She knew that. <laughs> so do you remember my name? My name's Andy. Andy. And this is Emily. Emily. And I'm Emily's dad. People love it, don't they? They love the fact that when they discover that you're my daughter and yeah. I'm your dad, they're like, oh no way, really? What's that like? And it it's almost it makes a very good icebreaker. Mm. That's our sort of yeah. USP, isn't it? USP. Unique selling point. Oh, didn't even know what that went. <laughs> How are you feeling now, pumpkin? You feeling okay? I'm going to put a little makeshift plaster over that just okay. to stop it from bleeding. There you go. <laughs> you look funny. <laughs> you got a plaster on your head. That looks funny. <laughs> Give me a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Mia's off to hospital with the whole family in tow. There you go. Pop your finger back in there. Good girl. Oh. You're right. If we have that little scratch in your foot just to take yeah, your blood, is that okay? Just gonna do it's a just a bit. tiny little owie, okay? Good girl. Well done. Well done. Aren't you so brave? That was really brave. So, her blood sugar's a little bit low. Okay. So, I'm just going to give her something to eat. Mia, here's a tube of some sweeties. Do you want some? It's okay. like jelly. It's, it's like just, jelly. Oh, well, it's have... just like sweeties. Put some on your finger. And then try eat. No. Just try a little bit on your finger. Have a try. It's just sugar. I'll leave that with you, I'll leave that with you Mum, okay. if you can get her to have some of that. Um, you need to try a beat. <laughs> you can do. Yeah, look. It's just sweet. Go. Oh, straight in your mouth. Oh, nice. let me have some. There you go. You have it. Me, let me. Are you going to squeeze it into your mouth? Oh, what? Can I have some? Good girl. Just check that. Good girl. The gel will raise Mia's low blood sugar levels. Are you good to go? Yeah, we're all ready. Are you good to go, Mia? Yes. 
Everybody's ready. Are you ready? Everybody's to ready. Mama, I'll be going to dessert. Are you going to the hospital? Yeah. Well, so they can put a little plaster there so it's all better. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. <laughs> the hospital is just over two miles from the family's home. Hello. I think. Arms out. Good girl. Mia will now be thoroughly checked over to make sure she's not suffered any concussion and to see if her wound needs stitching. How did you feel dealing with Mia? I felt fine. She was so brave. I mean, she having was. a cut right in the middle of your forehead, that's going to hurt a bit, isn't it? Yeah, and you did a good job calming her down and being nice and everything. I always find with kids, if you just irritate them a little bit, you get them laughing. Yeah, once you get them giggling and get them uh, thinking something's funny, yeah. it's very difficult to carry on being upset when you're thinking something's funny. Yeah. I often find myself calling the patient the last patient's name. Yeah. Well, sometimes I call patient my crewmate's name. That's quite, <laughs> <laughs> quite good. It's the most popular name now, Oliver. Is it? Apparently. Popular boy's name. You weren't named after the musical, were you? Uh, I think I was named from Thomas the Tank Engine. That's interesting. Because my middle name is Thomas as well. So is there, is, there's not an Oliver in there's Thomas an Oliver, the Tank Engine. Yeah. Is there? I'm, there not, is. I'm not up on Thomas the Tank Engine, to be fair. What's Oliver in the Thomas the Tank Engine? A train. <laughs> hey, it's busy. It is. Ambulance technician Jamie Busby and clinical team mentor John Ostrowski have just come on shift. Although they've known each other for three years, they've not often worked together. We have got a 82-year-old female, we think. She has been advised to call 999, 999 by her GP because she's having chest pains and shortness of breath. Ah, and at the end, it's got query nebulizer. She's fighting for breath. The patient's granddaughter, Katie, and great-grandson, Harley, are waiting to let the crew in. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Where are we going, Dan? <laughs> no worries. Oh, that's all right. Hello, Flower. Hello. Is it Mary, is it? I'm Jamie, and this is John. Hello, Mary. Hey, John. The coming here, right on under my breast. OK. How long have you had the pain for? About three o'clock this afternoon. So about an hour? Yes. OK. I've well, got a short of breath. Seven. Finger in there, darling. 13. 13, 26, 52. 52, that is a little bit on the fast side. <laughs> Jesus. Can I have a listen to your chest, Mary? Yes, you can. Yeah. I know it's hard, darling, but try and slow that breathing down for me. OK? Because it's just going to make you worse. Yeah, global wheeze. Is she known to have high blood pressure? Yeah. Very high very, blood pressure. That's OK, then. <laughs> Do you not have paracetamol, no? No. OK, because we're 38.8 at the moment. OK. I'm in quite a bit of discomfort. Yeah, I'm going to go for chest sepsis. Mary was struggling with her breathing. You know, she was breathing very fast and her heart rate was going very quick. She was in quite a panicked state. She tried to settle her down, listened to her chest and discovered that she'd got quite a widespread wheeze. And the other observations then went on to suggest that she was suffering with an infection of her chest. Just pop this mask on, give me a little bit of oxygen. Breathing in and out through your mouth for me. That's it, darling. Come here. Where are we on the old sepsis? That's a jump to 99 now. Marker. Um, we're red, mate, through and through. OK. So we used the phrase red flag, uh, which refers to sepsis. 
And uh, for Mary, basically was showing us that her body was really starting to struggle. Uh, she needed urgent treatment, otherwise she was going to get a lot worse. So when the phrase was used, it was just to highlight to both of us, just to make sure we both knew what situation we were actually dealing with. Right, it's going to be a sharp scratch. One, Look two, three. Beautiful. Pop that on. That's grand. That is a much better BP. 166. 16. Good. It was 200 and something a minute ago. Yeah. Mary's heart rate has slowed a little, but it's still very fast. Do you feel like that's helping at all? The nebulizer? A little. I won't take the pain away, but it should help you to breathe easier. You haven't been diagnosed with any lung conditions? No. No. All right. You hold on to me. One, two, three, hop. I'm going to give you some paracetamol on the way in, all right? But I'm going to put it through that vein, I think. A bit of fluid as well. Right, I'm going to tilt you back, darling, OK? Uh, I'll meet you there, OK? All right. There's not a lot to you, is there? Just have a look, listen to your chest again. That's pretty still there, isn't it? We beat the wheeze. Very crackly. You just lean forward for me. Thank you. Yeah, there is a wheeze. Going to give you another nebulizer, since the last one helped you a little bit. So how bad's this pain? So are we talking like a seven or eight out of ten? Or worse? Oh, worse. So nine? Yeah? Ooh, that is bad. You had no chest pains? No. So just that pain under your breasts? Yeah. On this side? Yeah. Sepsis can cause damage to every major organ in the body. But Mary's pain could also be from some other infection in her heart or lungs. Mary, what I can do with is just popping some more stickers across your chest yeah. and just so we can have a close look at what your heart's doing. Is that all right? Yeah. The crew are alerting the hospital that a high-risk patient is on her way. Hello, A&E. We've got an 83-year-old lady, uh, red sepsis alert, query chest, hypertensive at 228 over 65. O2 sats are at 100% on a nebulizer. Temp of 38.8. And we'll be with you in around about four minutes. Cheers now. See you in a bit. Ta -da. When we get there, we've asked them to see you straight away. All right, so don't panic. There might well be a lot of people around you, but they're just there to make you feel better. John wants to see if Mary can cope without the nebulizer. Let's knock that off for a minute. See where we go without that. Okay. It is, thank you. Do you feel like those two nebulizers have helped? Yeah. Feels like you can breathe easier now, does it? Well, it feels a bit better. If you start to feel short of breath again, you let me know. It seems to have done a bit of a good job on you. But two and a half minutes into the journey, Mary's breathing worsens again. What I'm going to do, because your oxygen levels have just dropped down a little bit again. Yes. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of oxygen, all right? Yeah. Just so your body hasn't got to work so hard for it. For number, number six, because we're a poorly person. The recess team are standing by to see Mary immediately. Oh, yeah. All right, let's pop you inside, my darling. Jamie and John have managed to get her safely to hospital. Now Mary will have the specialist treatment she urgently needs. Very well, initially, was she? No, bless her. In quite a bad, mm. quite a bad way altogether. It's just as well we got there fairly quick because she was, she was approaching the edge. I mean, that respirator when we first came in, that was that was pretty high. That was non-sustainable yeah. for a length, any length of time, really. Yeah. I mean, she's just going to wear herself out completely, and then we're going we're going to have real problems. She could have been um, a lot worse if she left much longer, I reckon. What would be your last meal? Um, if I had to uh, pick my own last meal, 
I probably have. Oh, I probably have the biggest, dirtiest banquet of Chinese I could order. You know, Just order it, everything. I, I, I put a lot of thought into this. Singapore chow mein. Okay. Uh, a special fried rice with the barbecue sauce. Nice. Um, it would be roast pork curry. And when you have a curry, you usually get chips with it. Yeah. So I'd have chips as well. Um, I absolutely love crispy beef. I, I could give myself a beef embolism. <laughs> um, and I'd have crispy seaweed, but I'd mix it in with the um, special fried rice because it gives it a really Ooh. nice, sort of crunchy texture as well. And a Diet Coke. <laughs> and a Diet Coke. <laughs> Regular crewmates Laura Hickman and Kerry Richards have been called to their next job. So we're going to a 45-year-old female with chesty pains. Tight chest, compressing pain. Does that cardio to be We'll find out. Ah, we will. Their patient is at a training centre in West Bromwich Town Centre. Before. Have you? Yeah, they got stuck in the lift. Oh, don't say things like that. I hate lifts. <sighs> Staff at the centre called for an ambulance when one of their students started feeling ill. Yeah. That's why we've um, put on the block. Okay, okay. What's our lady's name? Alintia. Alintia. Hello, Alintia. I'm Kerry. This is Laura. Okay. What's the, been going on this morning? You tell us a story, my love. Oh, chest pain. Have you had this before? Okay. How long ago? A while ago. Okay. I'm just gonna have it sit next to you and have a little failures. Did you go to hospital when you've had it before? What did they say it was? They didn't know. What are you whispering? I can't hear you. You just feel weak. All right. Is it okay if I do some checks on you, see what's going on? Oh. Where is the pain in your chest? Down across back. the back. Okay. Does it get worse when you take a deep breath in? No. Okay, we'll do some checks on you, see what's going on. Any history of heart problems in the family? I've got, um, what are with me, darling? Do you know? Have they ever said something like um, AF to you? No. Your heart rate at the minute is 64, so that's really good. That's average. It is a tiny bit irregular looking at it, but nothing. Toward. You don't have any breathing problems, you're not asthmatic? No. no. What was the pain like? Pain pressure. Like as if someone was pressing down yeah. and squeezing. Yeah. Right, so your blood pressure's good, heart rate's good, ECG's absolutely fine, sweetheart. Same thing, it's just like when the pain comes on, I'm like, what is it done? Yeah. But they just don't know what's causing these chest pains. Yeah. Sometimes you can just get them and there's there's no cause to it. You can just yeah. have this episode yeah. and then it goes and there's no reason, like, why. You don't suffer with anxiety, stress, anything like that, do you? You don't suffer from stress. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> suffer from stress. Millionaires don't suffer from stress. Are you under a lot of stress at the minute? Those are the more exams this morning, so I don't know. Might be. Well, yeah, yeah, you've got exams this morning, there you go. What exam are you doing? Maths. Maths. You've just not, That's enough not to stress the, anybody out. Probably put the nail on the head there, haven't you? Alintia hopes to become a social worker, but needs to get a maths qualification to get onto a course. Are we stressing you out now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone suffers stress and anxiety at least once in their life. Um, it can manifest in so many different ways, and depending on the type of person you are is, is how it all kind of come across. Some people have physical pain with it, others have panic attacks. Others shut themselves off and don't leave their bedroom. Um, it all just depends on, on how your body reacts to it um, and the amount of stress that you're going through at the time. I don't think it is cardiac related. I do yeah. think it's 
Like you said, you're under a lot of stress. You were having a maths exam this morning. Yeah. Because yeah. you've still got the pains out. I'm going to recommend you go. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I can't force you. There may be something that they can pick up or stay in a particular or something. Exactly. Even though the crew can't find anything causing her chest pains, they still take her symptoms very seriously. It still feels like someone's sat on your chest, so to speak. OK. Right in the middle. All right. How's that dizziness now? The headache's come back. Alintia will be taken into A and E. Are you happy to walk into the hospital, my sweet? Yes, I think so. Oh, okay. They'll do further tests to try to establish if it is stress or something else causing her chest pains. I don't think it was cardiac related. Oh, you know yourself, when you've had exams at uni, school, whatever, you always get some sort of stress. But the thought my exam's coming up at uni, that's stressing me out. Bless you. But ma nobody likes maths. Mathematicians like maths. Yeah, there is. But they're a strange breed. Yeah, my brother's one of them. He likes maths. Anxi no, uh... Anxiety's not nice. No, it's not the nicest. No. It's just learning how to deal with it when you've got it. It's early afternoon and colleagues and flatmates Craig Allsop and Kai Brooks have an urgent call coming in. 73-year-old male, Malcolm, uh, he's breathless, he's a COPD patient. Many heads with COPD around here. There is. There's a lot of COPD patients. Industry thing. In... Yeah, black country. Back in the day, it was very industrial, wasn't it? Factories, foundries, all sorts of manufacturing going on. COPD is a chronic lung disease that causes shortness of breath. That's the one. Malcolm's wife, Sylvia, is waiting for them. Hello, all right. Who have we come to see? Is it yourself? Hello. Hello. Let's have a feel of your wrist. Let's pop your finger in there. So how long's his breathing been like this? Just this morning? Yeah, when he got up, well, when he woke up this morning. Came on all of a sudden? He was really struggling to breathe. Mm. And I said, well, yeah, I'll get anxious, because he don't lie in bed because of his chest. Right. You know, I'll get him up. Yeah, and yeah. And get him down. How was down. he through the night? Well, he weren't too bad through the night. Weren't too bad through the night. Does he suffer with uh, irregular heartbeats? AF. Yeah. yeah, he's on warfarin, yeah. Well, I'll come mm. and pop these sticky dots For somebody you. with COPD, his, his oxygen saturations are really good, 96%. I know. It was obvious when we arrived that Malcolm was struggling with his breathing and he was quite distressed, he couldn't speak to us. Uh, he was a known COPD patient. However, when we assessed him, his oxygen levels were fine and it didn't seem to be his COPD that was the problem. Uh, we then needed to work out what it was and go from there. Do you find, Malcolm, when you stood up and, move, and walking around, it gets even worse, you're breathing? It's something to do with the eye, I think, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Whether, whether your heart rate's going a little bit too quick and you, it's taking your breath away a bit. We can't leave you breathing like this, can we? No. If you carry on like this, you're going you're gonna to get quite tired eventually. Craig and Kai think that Malcolm's poor breathing is being caused by his irregular heartbeat and not his lung condition. Whatever the cause, he's getting weaker and is only going to get worse if he doesn't get treatment soon. When was the last time you were seen at hospital? Oh, don't A long, long time. Long time. What do you say we pop you down there now? I don't want to see. I know, I know you don't, but I don't want to leave you at home with, you know, sh short of breath like you are. 
having done nothing for you. And, you know, what we don't want is for it to get any worse and then have to come back later, do we? So, you know... We don't say things unless we'll we... We'll take you down then, that's fine. Right then, Malcolm, do you want to sit on our chair? Just slide yourself round. Careful, careful. Oh, bless your cotton socks, thank you. <laughs> thank you. We're just getting oh. treats and treats. I know, on. yeah. One after the other. Do you have any grandchildren? Oh, yeah. We have. Do you want another one? Well, Not even 19. me. Oh, no, I'm not We've got 19 grandchildren, grandchildren. Let's make it a, a nice round 21 with the two of us. OK then, Malcolm, so if we undo this strap, if you want to have a little sit on this bed for us... We'll ..keep it upright so you don't... I'm ready when you are, Craig. Every time you've been in it, they've always said it was your lungs and not your heart. Yeah. Because you can be short of breath because of your heart. But, I mean, I'm now with you, see how he knows yourself. He ain't going to get no better. See, and he was a smoker, heavy smoker. He worked in a dirty factory. What was the factory? What did you yeah. produce? Motorcars. Parts for motor cars, is it? There wasn't anything he couldn't fix. Mm. And there we go and change the clock. We've arrived. Yeah. Let me have that one off you there, Mel. They will. Something's taking your, your breath away, isn't it? Is it Sylvia? <laughs> Have you, have you pinched his breath? <laughs> Taken his breath away. Malcolm will need to have further tests to know exactly what's responsible for his breathing problems. We do some bloods at the hospital now. Um, maybe do an ECG and if they deem it necessary, possibly a chest x-ray, won't they? But I'd say so, yeah. I, I would wish him a speedy recovery anyway. Hopefully he'll get sorted and uh, back home before he knows it. Did you buy that watch especially for when, when you joined? No, when we changed the colour of our shirts. I had a white one before. Are you having a laugh? No. You changed your watch colour? Yeah, because I like my, I like it to match. You're not joking either, are you? No. What? You telling me... I had a white one, because I had a white, white one. shirt? But I had a white one anyway. And then I thought, oh, white shirt. And then we switched the colour of the shirt, so I was like, oh, no, I, can't. I feel all out of sync, that it's a different colour. I feel a bit weird. So I need <laughs> me. So you went and bought a green watch? I needed it to be the same colour. I like to feel it, like matching. Matching? <laughs> yeah. Regular crewmates, paramedic Carl Williams and technician Daz Roberts have just received their next job. Well, we're going to a 48-year-old female state in SVT attack. Oh, yeah, you're SVT. Ooh. I know. I wonder what range she's at. SVT, or supraventricular tachycardia, is a serious condition where your heart suddenly beats much faster for no apparent reason. If it doesn't correct itself quickly, urgent medical attention is needed. Hello. You in the front? Hello. Hiya, what's your name? Lisa French. Hi Lisa, I'm Daz. What's been going on? I 
I guess me too, but I think it's reverted now. Do you suffer with this a lot? I haven't for a while, but I've had it on and off for a couple of weeks. We've reverted, but this time it's took a while. How long? Uh, it's been about 15 minutes now. Normally after a couple of minutes it'll go. What medication do you take? Nothing. Nothing? So normally I can do it like with the breathing. SVT can be caused for a number of reasons. It is normally an electrical uh, malfunction within the heart. To the patient suffering, it will feel as if they're running a marathon or doing some serious exercise, albeit they may just be laying in bed or sitting watching a programme on TV. I'll pop this on your arm. So normally you can resolve it after a couple of minutes? Yeah, this That's time fine. it's took a while. About 15, did you yeah. say? Yeah. I've still got like an, an aching in my chest, but normally that goes straight away. Right. This left me short of breath this time. Your heart rate is a tiny, tiny bit fast, 108. I'm supposed to be doing a night shift tonight, you know, and I can't see that. Oh, what'd you do? Oh, the reception's there. Uh, I'll book you like you. <laughs> New Cross. Oh? Yeah. Lisa works as an administration clerk at a local hospital, a job that she got after taking drastic steps to improve her own health. And I lost a uh, new 20 stone. Really? Yeah, I tried the gastric bypass and my SBT stopped. Lisa. You lost nearly 20 stone? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Blimey. That's a lot. Yeah. Do you mind me asking what you were? <laughs> Yeah, I was 30 odd stone. Blimey. Well, congratulations, well done. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Feel better for it. Yeah. I could work again now. Couldn't walk before. Really? I do a full heart trace, okay? You know that these have to go under your left breast? Yeah. Okay, look. You've had these a few times, haven't you? Yeah. There you are. Okay, nice and still, no moving. So you got your big birthday next year? Yes. Yeah. So have I. Mine's in May. This is May, I'm going to morning, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Daz is doing a good job of distracting newlywed Lisa, taking her mind off her symptoms. Your heart rate's reducing still. You're down on, like, 102 now. So when we first come in, 116, then 108 when I told you last, wasn't it? Yeah. Because they're going to come down straight away. It's just going to no, come down gradually, the yeah. more you relax them. And... You know, we advise that you go to hospital to get checked out. Mm. We do advise it. It's a free way but... to get to work, isn't it? Because yeah. of, <laughs> of the pain in your chest and that it's SVT that you suffer with. Yeah. And this was a longer bout than what you're normally used yeah. to, so we always advise that you go. Yeah, it's fine. And that's then fine. you haven't got a phone in sick, you can show in sick. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, look, I'm in hospital bed. <laughs> you, do you normally suffer with high blood pressure? Your blood pressure's in a slightly higher range at the minute, all right? Um, but I'm guessing all part and parcel of what you've just experienced. I'm going to take these off. You were worried and stuff. And... Mm. So when did you start having SVT then? Bypass. That's why I've lost all the weight. Are you eating healthier? Yeah. I can't eat the rubbish and I'm messing with you. I have what they call dumping syndrome. Where I get the sweats and the shakes and I'm not sure I'm all. Dumping things yeah. you're just eating. It's horrible feeling that. I'd rather not eat the chocolate and the Yeah. Food. You're doing good. Relax. Don't think still, about still it. Still feeling tight here, yeah. though. Don't think about it. Here we are. Right, madam. Your chariot awaits. <laughs> Let's see who recognises you. All of them. What are you doing here? Usually, Lisa comes to A&E to go to work. This time, she'll be seen by colleagues on the cardiology team who will investigate her racing heart. I can't believe she's lost 20 stone. I know, that's amazing, that is. 
She was saying that she couldn't walk before she lost all the weight. She was housebound, couldn't work, couldn't walk. But it's done the job for her. Supraventricular tachycardia can be a funny one, really, because anything can cause it. It must be absolutely horrible feeling your heart race that fast. Three-year-old Mia, who fell at home, hitting her head on a radiator, didn't need stitches and has since made a full recovery. Mary was found to have had a severe asthma attack and spent four days in hospital. Thankfully, she didn't have chest sepsis. She was treated with IV fluids and given new medication for her high blood pressure. Alintia had an ECG and blood tests to try and figure out the cause of her bouts of chest pain. So far, the doctors haven't found anything and have put her symptoms down to stress. Malcolm's sudden onset of severe breathing difficulty was found to be caused by an infection. He was given a nebulizer and treated with antibiotics. He stayed in hospital overnight. He's slowly beginning to feel better. Hospital receptionist Lisa was taken to her place of work for treatment and discharged the same day. She's currently being assessed by cardiologists to see if medication is needed to control her heart condition. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Is that? <laughs> 